Hey, welcome back. I'm Jeff Hughes. You're listening to the ebook revolution once again. And um, we've got a great show lined up for you today. I've been up early to talk to Mr. Manny Wolf from San Francisco, California. Manny Wolf is a host of the high rated podcast, The Steep Side of the Mountain Lessons from Unmentored Life. He's a sought after business coach and he's about to release his brand new book, The Tao of the Unbreakable Man. And uh, this book is based on his life story and the lessons learned from it and what a life story it is. Manny was born into a new age cult in 1967 in San Francisco. And when he was nine years old, his family moved from the Height ashbury area to one of the most violent ghettos in the United States, in Stockton, California. There he was forced to learn powerful awareness skills, how to read people and talk to them and understand them, as if his life depended on it, because often it did. Because without any real role models to look up to, his early life was one of violence, crime and drug abuse, which continued right up until his 28th birthday, and a moment of clarity saved him. Since that moment of clarity, he's dedicated himself to becoming the kind of man that he wanted to have in his life as a boy, the kind of man who lives with passion and purpose and sets an example to others of what's possible in a lifetime, the kind of man who strives to leave a legacy and leave the world a little better than he found it. It's an extraordinary story, an ex- extraordinary book and um, I'm very pleased to um, have the opportunity and chance to talk to Manny today about the Tower of the Unbreakable Man. Let's uh, listen to the interview now. Manny, welcome to the show. Your new book, The Tower of the Unbreakable Man. Now that's an intriguing title. What's the story behind the title? So, the reason that the that I, I named it that was because the whole thrust of the book is to show you the way or the Tao, right? Yeah. Uh, the way that I was able to sort of extract lessons from these um, very, very challenging situations and, and sort of my, one of my overall teaching philosophies, one of my um, uh, just foundational concepts is that we can train ourselves – to find something useful out of any situation. Therefore, every situation has value, no matter how difficult it is. And so that was sort of the name was born out of those ideas. What is it you think that makes a man unbreakable? I would say resiliency, flexibility, the exact opposite things that the word conjures. (laughs) (laughs) You know, um, if you think you're going to stand steadfast like you know, like a, I don't know, like a ramrod or something against all that life throws at you. My experience is that you will in fact break, you know, and there are many levels to this, of course, philosophically, but to me, unbreakable is yielding. Unbreakable is willing to change, you know, willing to bend, flex and adapt is what makes you truly unbreakable. Well, Manny, you certainly are an unbreakable character yourself. And you're also in great demand as an executive coach. Tell me a bit more about that. Well, so what I do is I train people in mind, deep mindset mastery. Um, it's really, you know, it should be distinguished from the fluffy feel good kind of um, what I jokingly refer to as mindset 101 stuff, you know, personal improvement 101. Um it's deep and it requires work. So I train people in that, how to be uh, charismatic communicators. So primarily it's for speaking from the stage and also what I would call executive communication. So like C-suite executives oftentimes need to learn how to communicate more effectively and more you know, concisely and with more influence as they get higher and higher into their careers. So it's those two things primarily, and there's definitely an element of personal transformation that is in there as well, although I don't directly say, 
you know, I specifically teach personal transformation. Yeah. What happens is as a result of learning this, this mindset work and learning how to communicate in a precise way, transformation occurs. It gets right back to words again, doesn't it? It all does. Yeah, that is, <laughs> that is really my lens. You know, my lens is communication. And it's fascinating to me because one of my great heroes, Stephen Covey, the late Stephen Covey, um, he said that there were two creations for everything, the mental creation and the physical creation. The mental is, of course, dreaming it up. And then the physical, obviously, is, is making it a physical reality. And here's the thing that I am just so enamored of is all things that go from the first creation to the second creation pass through the aperture of communication, right? And so if you don't have that, that skill set really, really refined, it's going to limit your ability to do these second creations, to bring things to life. That's interesting to me. What, what would you say is the biggest myth of success that holds people back from succeeding? Wow, that's a great question. The biggest myth of success. Um, let, me, let me give you a few of the, of the ones that top the heap. One is the idea that is very popular here in the States of the, uh, the self-made man and manifest destiny. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's, it's just, a, it's a misinterpretation of those ideas because the real self-made men, you know, let's look at the, um, Carnegie's, the Ford's, the Firestone's, these men all understood that everything happens through relationships with other people. Right. And yeah. yet history tells us that they're self-made men. Um, so if you want good relationships with other people, your communication skills must be good because the level of your relationships cannot surpass the level of your ability to communicate. So one of them is this idea that we can do it all ourselves. That's one of the biggest obstacles to success I know. One of the other ones is making the very common mistake of believing that pesky little voice in your head that that only exists to hold you back. Some call it the inner critic. I call it the inner dialogue, you know, the negative self-talk, whatever you want to call it. I call it the inner uh, asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Again, whatever you want to call it. Um, be aware of that thing and understand that Elon Musk has it too. Richard Branson has it too, right? Everyone deals with it unless, oddly enough, unless you're a sociopath. So, <laughs> you know, pretty much all of us deal with. It. But well, I mean, a anyone who has empathy, the ability to feel empathy is going to have that, that critical inner voice. So those are two of the big ones, you know, and then the idea that overnight successes are really, that they really exist. You know, an overnight success is the equivalent of an iceberg emerging from the water and you seeing the tip of it. Well, Manny, no one could certainly accuse you of overnight success. You've worked very, very hard for your success and I wish you great success with the book, The Tower of the Unbreakable Man. Whereabouts can people buy it? Uh, best place to do it is through my website, which is mannywolf.com. And my last name has an E at the end of it. So it's M-A-N-N-Y-W-O-L-F-E. Well. Yeah, so just mannywolf.com. The book will be up as soon as it's out. And of course, uh, if for some reason you don't want to visit my website, you can go to Amazon and look for The Tao of the Unbreakable Man. And it's a fantastic read. I highly recommend it to listeners of our podcast. I've only uh, many shared the early draft with me, but um, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading the entire edited book. Be the, but the draft I read just had me on the edge of my seat. And Manny, I can see a uh, mini series in this. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was talking about, it being very cinematic. Um, yeah, perhaps uh, the Breaking Bad of Manny Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, one of my great fantasies and and desires is to uh, is to be able to have that experience of being the writer on the movie set of his own book. You know, <laughs> so let's hope and and we'll see what happens. 
well, anything can happen. I mean, you've proved yourself a great writer. It's a great read. And what I truly admire is how you've taken your personal history and confronting as it is, you've told that story and used it for your own catharsis. What advice would you give to new writers that feel they have a story to tell but um, don't have the confidence or don't think they have what it takes to be a writer? Wow. So that's a hell of a question. Um, yeah, I like to pull. <laughs> I, whew. You know, it's it's not an unbiased opinion, but I'm going to say go for it. I got to tell you, the one thing I haven't covered with you here today is the phenomenal transformative power of writing that story. I mean, it was... Yeah, that's interesting to me because um, you... Obviously, that's been boiling in your head for quite a, <laughs> quite a while. Tell me about the, the transformative effects of that. Did you get to the part <clears throat> that I affectionately refer to as the rant? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, so I got up to the moments before that and I was like, oh my God, I've come from the family meeting all the way back to my birth, told, you know, the whole sordid tale and now I don't know how to end it. And that part was channeled if anything was channeled in that book, it was absolutely, it just came gurgling out of me like, mm. like lava. Uh. And so your question is how was it cathartic? You know, what yeah. was the, what was the transformational experience? Yeah. All of the dynamics between my family and I in specific had huge teeth and fangs for, or, or in claws for me, you know, and they were sunk into me. When I got it out on paper like that, it was as though I just released from the whole thing. You know, mm. they were still there metaphorically biting in and clamping down, but I had let go of the whole thing. Yeah, it was out of yourself. Yes, yes, it was out of myself. And so now all of the feelings uh, and the frustrations and the, and the dynamics with my family, they just don't have the effect on me they used to. So in a sense, I freed myself in that way. Um, and, you know, that turned out to be the biggest debilitating factor of my life was trying to meet the sort of ever moving target of approval of my family, mm. which I'm a big thinking visionary, mm. stumble a lot of times, hit one out of the park entrepreneur. That's me. Yeah. You know, and I can't deny that any longer. You know, I am, I'm every inch the Frank, Frank Sinatra song. I did it my way, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's win, lose or draw. And, uh, and my family is to say that they don't know what to do with that is to pass up an opportunity to say that they're just confronted with something they can't even wrap their heads around, yeah. you know? And so as a result, they would criticize and, and offer suggestions and everything, but all of it was essentially the message that I got was just stop wanting more. Shrink yourself so that your expectations fit within what you can do right now, which for me is death. I mean, there's no difference to me between living like that and being dead. And so that was the catharsis I had to have. I had to see them for who they were. And that was the transformative power of that book. And that was also the insight that I had been searching for for 20 years before that. From the day I held the gun and plotted the man's death up until the family meeting, that was the insight I was searching for. So what's next for Manny once the book comes out? The book ideally will launch the same day as my flagship uh, speaker training program. And... Then it's just getting out there and supporting the book and beginning to teach more and more people how to not only deliver from the stage in a way that is just incredibly passionate, powerful, persuasive, and precise, but also, you know, to teach people how to have that transformation through the, through the um, lens of your communication. 
Uh, so, you know, I've been sort of a little bit just keeping my, my nose to the grindstone or my shoulder, whichever body part it is to the grindstone <laughs> while I've watched a lot of my friends be doing all these exciting high profile things. And so for me, it's about a lot of taking the stage myself again. It's about a lot of, uh, workshops and, and seminars and speaking engagements. I can tell by your energy that you thoroughly enjoy being on the stage. Uh, yes, <laughs> to say the least, you know, it's, it's about as far from what I was taught to believe I was capable of as I can imagine. And every time I've done it, it has been just, yeah, I just love it. Well, Manny, you make a big difference to a lot of other people's lives. And when people read your story, um, I'm sure you're going to make, um, great difference as well. Thank you again. It's been a pleasure. It's been my absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Uh, little technical hiccups notwithstanding, this has been a great interview, and I'm really glad we got a chance to connect. Thank you, Manny. It's been fantastic. All right, buddy. Yeah, what a great interview. That, of course, was uh, Manny Wolf. Um, I'm Jeff Hughes. You've been listening to the ebook Revolution. Um, and as I said, we've been talking to Manny Wolf and his new book, the Tower of the Unbreakable Man, and what a fearless writer Manny is. I mean, this book is just a, a great example of a personal men memoir where Manny has been just fearless, a fearless writer. He's gone into some fairly dark places, some confronting places, but he's found the truth. He's found the truth in his writing, and he's dredged up, and he's written, he's written about it a very dark past and childhood and he's written about it and um, it's been a cathartic experience for him but it's he's also created a great story he hasn't forgotten the tenets of storytelling in bringing up this tale this tower of the unbreakable man what a remarkable person it's been a, a great pleasure um, uh, talking to him this morning. Um, well, that's it for me. The ebook Revolution podcast. I'm Jeff Hughes. If you would like to go to iTunes and give us a review, uh, that'd be fantastic because reviews are the lifeblood of podcasts. The more people that um, have a happy review about the podcast, the more that the word gets out and it helps helps us do this little thing. If you could uh, share the podcast with people that may be interested in independent writing, publishing, life of the entrepreneur, etc., etc. And of course, um, the pod podcast notes for this edition of the ebook revolution are available up on madhousemedia.com.au slash podcast. That's it for me, Jeff Hughes. You've been listening to the ebook Revolution. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.